Hi, thanks for joining me today. This is Heather Smith and today's video is about setting up Xero. I have recorded an earlier video several years ago and a lot of things perhaps have changed along the way. So I thought I'd record another one so you can see what's happening. I'm recording this June 2016. So if you're, if you're seeing it in a several years time, it, again, some changes may have happened. That is the beast of working in the cloud. Go down to the bottom right hand corner and click on the little gear key um, and choose the highest definition to watch the video in. You should be able to view it in high definition. And I would really appreciate it if you do learn something from this video. Can you like the video, share the video and subscribe to my channel? That would be most appreciated. So let's get started. So here I am at the zero screen and you'll see at the very top, it actually says HK. That's because I was helping someone in Hong Kong set up their Xero file for them. So what you need to do, what I need to do is I need to come along here, scroll to the very bottom and change it. See my region says Hong Kong. I'm going to change that to Australia because I'm going to set it up for um, Australia. And here I am. And that looks like an ostrich, doesn't it? I don't think emus do that. <laughs> I think only ostriches do that. So we're on the Xero homepage and what we're going to do is click up here on free trial. So here I am at the Xero sign up page and I'm going to enter my name. Now I didn't show you my, my I didn't show me entering my name because it actually came up an auto filled, but uh, that's putting, putting my details in and check that I have read and agreed to the terms uses terms of use and private policy here. I'm now going to click the get started option. So you should receive an email into your inbox and I'm just going to pull up my um, emails to show you. I received this. It did actually take about 10 minutes to come through and uh, I click here on the login uh, .zero.com, the token. Let's see what will happen. And here I create a password. Uh, it says it needs to be at least eight characters, including one or more number. And here um, it brings me to the welcome to zero screen. Now, as I do this, it kind of comes up a tiny little bit different because I already have a zero account and I'm just trying to create a new one to show you what's happening here. I'm going to I'm going to put in my uh, username and my password. Click in uh, login. Excellent. So now I am at the stage of creating a new Xero file. Now I'm planning to set up an Australian file and these are the options at this stage for an Australian file, but I did just want to run through what the other options were. So if I click here in Australia and let's go to New Zealand and you can see very similar. And if I go to United Kingdom, it actually asks me about uh, when is your financial year end and uh, rather than GST, of course, they have that. Also at this stage offering um, the opportunity to convert Sage or QuickBook files. And let's go to, oh, let's just do this one. Okay, so uh, United States with the opportunity to convert QuickBooks file. Remember, that would have to be a US QuickBooks file, okay? And I'm um, not sure if there's going to be an option here, but let's try it. Canada. Okay, so that's what the Canadian option is, um, and it's highlighting a financial year end, which you could change uh, if necessary. And all others, uh, let's pick um, somewhere that looks exciting, Andorra. All others will probably come up with uh, financial year end requirement, um, but um, and and look, it's it's pulling in the currency there, which is great. Let's pick something else. Um, I don't know any of these places. They're Cayman Islands pulling in the currency and uh, giving you the opportunity at this stage to set the financial year end. 
but I am going to, for the purpose of this uh, training video, I'm going to be selecting Australia. So the name of my file, um, I'll call it fit biz. My file will pay, um, organisation will pay taxes in Australia and my time zone. Now this is a quick way to change this. I hate this little thing here. If, if you don't know exactly what you're changing to, it takes a long time to find it. But I'm changing my time zone to Brisbane. What does your organisation do? Well, that's, it, it's actually looks like an alphabetical list there. I will choose um, accounting and that's what I do. Fitbiz wouldn't do that. It would do, well, let's see if we can find some fitness there. Fit, uh, health, training, personal training. So you can see you've got a few options there. They seem to have um, restricted the options there, which is interesting. It used to be a sort of a free for all. They've gone in and obviously, uh, worked out some more defined options there. So that um, is interesting to know, I like that. And are you registered for GST? My option here will be yes. And then you have um, two here options here, which is one, start trial or buy now. Sorry, I should highlight here, if you're using, this is in the Australian version, if you're using MYAB or Reckon, you have the opportunity to import the data from either of those two, two solutions into Xero for free. They'll do a conversion for you and, and work ahead. Uh, so that's definitely something you should consider if you are using MYAB or Recon. But then we have the option, the green button to start the trial or the blue button to buy now. So you would probably start a trial now. Um, I have 30 days free, so that's what I'm going to do. If you had perhaps a promo code that was better than 30 days free, that's when you would perhaps opt for the buy now option and uh, that would you would then be able to apply that promo code so let's click start trial so we've come up with a window here and it said you're all ready to go here are the default settings to get you started you can change these at any time they've provided me with a, a default chart of accounts but you can customize them or import your own at any point in time any point in time you can customize them. There is a conversion date. It's opted for a conversion date of 1st of June 2016. Um, so if you have old transactions from that date forward, you would be importing them. You can go in and change that conversion date. It's just decided that that's the one it's going to give you. Uh, remember, I'm setting this up in June. That's why it's opted for that date. And it has decided that the financial year end is June the 30th, as this is what the majority of Australian organisations do use. So that's excellent. Um, and that is what I'll be using if you're a not-for-profit um, or you're associated with an international company, you may change it. I'm going to click OK. And here is my organisation. Um, previously, I used to have a wizard to work through this but I no longer have that. So that's really interesting. What it comes up with is I have at the top here, a getting started video, the um, option to connect my bank feeds, to add my organization details. Let's me up, see what I have here. Oh, look, so this is what it's doing. At the top here, I have the getting started video. I then feed through to connect your bank feeds. I then add your organization details to keep in touch with um, customers. Then design the custom themes for the documents you send to clients. Get paid by customers instantly or set up a payment service. Invite your advisor or find one in the directory. Edit or import your chart of accounts. Import customers as suppliers you regularly transact with. And there's some uh, other things here. So you can check out the add-on directory for specialised business needs. You can handle your business while you're on the go with zero touch. You can check out Zero TV for tips, tricks and accounting essentials. And you can read the small business guide for tips and tricks and, ac and accounting essentials. Again, <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> um, so might need some... Um, additional copy editing on that. So let's pop back up here and I just want to work through these. You're obviously watching me. I'm using Google Chrome and I don't know what's going to happen when I click in on the link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually hover over the link, bring up my shortcut menu. See my shortcut menu there? 
and I'm going to choose the option open link in new tab and at the top here you can see a new tab has opened excellent so I'm actually going to open all of them in a new tab and then I'll go through and see what they're asking me to do but let's go connect our bank feeds this is where I'm going first clicking up here our bank account currently have no bank accounts and you have the option to add the bank accounts here so let's go back add your organization details opened up organization settings so this is where I go through and add my organization settings um, I can add display name legal name logo what's your line of business remember we filled that out before it's come up as a default organization type here there are lots of different options there however when I've tested them they don't come up with anything different the Australian business number you would enter here you can enter your branch number if you have um, multiple branch numbers and you can enter your organization description here you can enter your postal details here your physical address details here your telephone your email your website and you've got lots of different uh, contact details that you can enter there that will also appear on your online invoicing so what I do like I'm just going to quickly do this one because I do like this one you've got the quick find options here so let's go 100 Queen Street Brisbane and it's searching it's searching and it's come up with that fantastic so I just select that and it auto fills. see how that auto filled there so that's really quick tip please do utilize that when you're setting up your contacts because you can see for a start it filled out the information it's filled it out correctly it's added a postcode and it's capitalized the suburb I love the suburb being capitalized I'm just going to click there just so we have some information and I'm going to save that I'm going back to my original page and I had design custom theme so I'm going to pop back in here and this takes me directly to my invoice settings area for setting up my invoices I'm going to pop back here and get paid by your customers instantly by setting up payment services and if I click on that that takes me here to my payment services and this is where I go through and add my payment services excellent so I'm popping back here to see what the next option is I have invite your advisor I'm going to click here and this is where my advisor is okay so this is settings invite a user this is uh, what inviting the advisor is so if you were going to invite me into this this is how you would go about doing it you come in and you go Heather Smith you put in my um, email address which I'm not going to give you now otherwise I will get spammed by a million billion people and then you would opt for full access advisor and um, when I ask to be invited in I typically uh, I typically want to have the ability to manage payroll managing the users gives me the option um, to add additional users if you want me to do that but I don't necessarily do that a lot and I don't normally set up your bank account so I just want the payroll admin and then I would click continue it's actually because I'm already in this one it's going to freak out a bit so I'm just going to put in there click on continue and then I would send the invite um, send the invite and then it would go that would be sensational but what I'm going to do I'm not going to send that because I don't need to invite that person in I'm going to click back here on users and I'm going to highlight something this is me this is me set up in the file so this would be you this top one the one with subscriber beside it would be you and I'm going to click on it when you physically set your own file up when you physically set your own file up this is what it defaults to it doesn't default to give you full access of the file you don't have access to do activity statements publish reports put in lock dates if you set up your own business this is the way that you would be set up however personally I would want full access so I would actually change it to the advisor notice at the top here it says dashboard accounts payroll reports contacts I'm going to change this to the advisor 
for some reason when you click advisor it unticks contact bank account so make sure you tick back on that click save and notice what's going to happen up here I now actually have access to a whole separate area so I, that's something that I do want um, that I do personally want access to so let's go back over here we have invite your advisors that was inviting someone like me in and then I'm going to click on my directory see what this opens up for us so this is the advisory uh, the advisory directory for finding a certified advisor and so you can look for business and tax advice um, financial tasks uh, financial goals of financial advisor plus you can look for a cloud integrator so that's someone like me I sort of sit in that space there um, I am a BAS agent I am an accountant but uh, I sit in that space there and let's go and have a look the other thing I can do is edit or import my chart of accounts open that link up and here is the Fitbiz chart of accounts. We're using the default chart of accounts. We can add um, accounts. We can add bank accounts here. Back here, I can import customers and suppliers. So these are my zero contacts I can import from this point here. This is directing me to the zero support areas. And this is my home dashboard. So that was kind of really simple. It's the whole setting up process is a lot simpler than it used to be. Sensational. So that was a sort of a very simple, quick overview of setting up in Zero. Hopefully you found that useful. Please get in touch with me at heathersmithsmallbusiness.com if you need any further assistance. Thank you.